Guys, I love doing champion training within Raid Shadow Legends. It's the best thing to ever come to Raid. And you know what I love even more so than doing champion training? Doing champion training back to back. There's nothing that can beat it in this game. I, I mean, seriously, honestly. Now, what we have here is a special opportunity to earn the five-star Arbiter Perfect Soul. But not just that, because I don't really care about that. Uh, honestly, like, it's, it's for more... Uh, upper echelon players, I'm just not that, and I'm not going to fight in another champion training war. I am interested in the skin for Arbiter. And now, it's not that the blessing for Arbiter is a bad idea to go for, obviously. In this game, blessings are a huge boon, because you could strengthen your team aura by 15%, and then weaken the enemy by 20%, and that could be a game changer for a fight. But me, I'm all about the skin here. Look at this, the Lumaya Prophet skin. Doesn't she just look divine? I do want this Jade Serpent skin too, but it's been a while since I've seen it available for us. If you're a newer player and you're wondering how do you do champion training, it's pretty simple. You level up your champions, you upgrade ranks of champions, so it, it breaks down the points that you get. So obviously do, going from five to six will net you the most points. You can also ascend, but when it comes to ascension, I would caution against ascending during champion training. I think it's actually better to ascend a champion during CBC because you could actually get a lot more points. You could also use skill tomes. In fact, this is probably how I lost that uh, war for Archer. Some guy probably just was sitting on 200 legendary tomes at 200 points per pop. That, you know what I mean? You could easily climb 200 or 20,000 points in like 15 minutes and e even hell hades did a video on that so i am going to go for the skin and that's it i'm gonna stop there i i uh, if you couldn't tell by now guys i actually do not like champion training i'm i'm sick of it guys i'm sick of it i, I but they keep putting things in front of me dangling carrots and you know i'm a sucker for avatars i'm a sucker for skins now, there is something else you need to know about. I would not just jump straight into doing champion training right now because there is something else. And I would caution you against pumping out all of your champ training points because there is an efficient way for you to do this. It also coincides with the Festival Titan event. And it's this right here, the Dragon Turn Attack. This indicator right here, this tab, festival titan event earn festival points, it's going to start in about 16 hours. But I would hold off on doing this so that we can be efficient, double dip. Get your dragon teams ready, and I'm gonna show you my team. It's a four day event. Do this and that at the same time. I only got to this point right here because I was preparing two specific champions for other videos, and you know, stay tuned for that. And I've done videos on this before when it comes to turn attack teams. Your points that you gain from doing these specific events or tournaments come from how many turns it takes. What you can do is drop stages, and instead of doing like, if you're used to doing Dragon Hard 10, you could even drop down to like Dragon Hard Dragon 1, or you could even go to Normal and do Stage 20. The idea is you're going to have a champion who can solo these stages. So for me, my solo champion is going to be Theodore. So what I'm going to do is just take Theodore, put him in the front, and I'm going to pair him with more champions and the reason i'm doing specifically spirit and night revenant is to do uh, is to do the missions for the forge pass as well so we're just going to throw in some champions here and you're going to pick the stage i like to choose the stage that is more affinity friendly for me so grass beats fire we're going up against the fire this is stage eight but this is also going to work. In fact, I think it might even be better for me to drop all the way down to stage 4 because it'll be faster, less turns taken. But you'll see here that Theodore is going to solo all of this by himself. These guys will die off. He gets his boosts from Masteries and, you know, all the other things that are happening. And he's going to poison away the, the enemies, both waves, and then he takes care of the boss by himself. Now... Some of you guys might be saying, you do not have, um, sorry, I read this over here, I was about to say Armand's. Uh, I hang out in International Zero now, by the way. Some of you guys might not have Theodore, I understand. If you do have Theodore, great. But if you don't, there is another champion, Battle Kazar. Um, 
the the idea is you have somebody to place poisons Theodore just does it better because he activates it at the same time while placing the increased speed buff and there's going to be more mechanics that I'm going to uh, I'll show you guys in a minute after the run here but if you don't have Theodore you can use Battle Kazar if you don't have Battle Kazar though there's there's different options generally you want somebody who does HP burns and you want to put them in uh, regen and immortal or maybe even triple immortal or you could do regen and defiant and they're going to do the entire run by themselves so here we are at about a hundred turns now and Theodore is not going to die luckily the decreased attack doesn't affect him because his damage is based off his poisons he also places poison sensitivities uh, so we're doing it in about 111 turns We'll do it even faster if we drop down to stage 4. So here, we're getting the points for doing the dragon turn attack, as well as the points for champion training. And that's why it's it's important to be as efficient as possible, especially if you're free to play and you want things. Now, of course, uh, if you don't really care about doing certain events or, or whatnot, then completely disregard this. But it's also good to know for future reference if you're not in the know. But this is how a lot of the end game players actually uh, do these events and how they're able to be so efficient unless you're just a complete crack and you don't, and you don't care so as you can see we're already on wave two clearing through the waves on stage four is going to be a lot faster just because of the different champions uh, and you know stat difference uh, stat, stat differentials and the boss is almost dead not even approaching 100 turns like we were on stage eight and it's pretty safe this is pretty safe because the build is solid uh, other champions I can think of that could solo fit like you, you could use a bunch of there's a bunch of champions that you could try to use to solo but you generally want somebody who places HP or let's see, let's see, HP burns uh, bombs are also a great thing like you could use uh, ninja technically uh, not efficiently because his you know HP burns are single target not AoEs another good option is UDK, you could put him in a Toxic set. He places the small baby versions of Toxic. He also has the healing and the shields, as well as the boost with his passive to his own uh, sturdiness. You could probably use Venus. Chronom I've, I've used before to, to solo dungeons, and he's pretty solid. Um, but just take a look at your roster. Walking Tomb Dreng is another option. Artak, a lot of you guys probably have Artak. Great solo champion. I use him to solo Hard, uh, hard Ice Golem. Skrank is another champion that I, I haven't built, but... Um, you know, people say he's really good. I, I, he does AoE HP burns, so he's an awesome champion for, for soloing. Let's see, you could probably get away with bomb champions. I know a lot of people, not a lot of people, but you could use Nishak Vermin Lord, and he, and he can just be a bomber rat and just bomb his way through the entire run. Again, just regen, immortal, or regen and defiant. Uh, poisoners, so you're looking for people who place poisons. Um, obviously Battle Kazar can do this. Urogrim, even though he has been nerfed, he still places poisons. Not as many, but he can still do it if you're looking for um, somebody to do this. And again, you could always drop stages. So there's nothing wrong with dropping to like stage uh, if you only want to do the dragon event. And I've showed I've shown um, this before for Fire Knight. Like you could drop all the way down to like stage one or four. And because you're finishing the the round or the fight so quickly in like small in, in a small amount of turns, you get a good amount of points for it. And there's videos on it that I've done. You can you know check. But here is how I have Theodore built. So he does place the decreased speed on his A1. He's got the poison with the poison sensitivity, so that his poisons do even more damage with the increased speed. Also placing the weaken, so that you're taking or the enemies are taking more damage as well as increasing duration of poisons and HP burns, as well as activating them on top of that. And then uh, this doesn't really apply. But he's in regen and immortal, so he's healing by... He gets extra HP from his immortal set, and then he heals by 18% for every turn that he takes, so we're going to build him fast. I will also note that he is wearing a blood shield ring. Why is this important for your farmers? This takes you to the next level, right? So if you happen to have a star, even just one star blessing for whoever you're going to use as your camp, or not campaign farmer, as your dungeon solo farmer, you're going to want to have a blood shield ring on them. And you, I think you get that from doing CBC. 
but you put emergency heal on them. This is probably already old news. But every time the shield expires, removes, or it gets broken by an enemy attack, the value of the heal is proportionate to this champion's max HP. So 3% of Theodore's max HP is going to be healed onto Theodore every single time something happens to the shield where it basically goes away. And you guys saw that in the run where every time he would get hit or it went away, he was healing. So that's extra heals on top of the heals that he's getting from the regen and immortal set. Again, you could use regen and defiant. Defiant will increase your defense as well as um, decrease damage taken from AoE attacks, especially going up against Hellraiser, the hard uh, dragon, where he does AoE moves. This is going to help you stay alive. So you have options depending. Here are the pieces of gear. I know some of you guys actually like to look at the pieces of gear to see what I'm prioritizing or what stats to look for specifically. Uh, this doesn't matter too much. I mean, HP, it just happened to be that this specific ring had a lot of HP survivability on it, so that worked out. But as long as you have a, a blood shield ring, that's going to help out quite a bit. So when it comes to his stat priorities, we're mainly focusing on high HP. It's important to get high HP because the more HP you have, the bigger the heals. Remember, we're healing 18% of um, Theodore's max HP and 3% with my one star blessing of his 93,000 uh, 93, HP. It's also good to have defense. You want to have a good HP to defense balance. Saf talks about it in his videos, talking about EMHP, effective max HP. So it's not enough all the time to just have high amounts of HP and to go fast. Because if you are if you have like less than 2,000 defense, you're probably going to get smacked super hard. And if you're going against the waves, for an example, or somebody who just smacks super, super hard, like um, the hard fire, or not, you don't solo with the hard fire, or the, the ice golem, or... Um, the sand devil who hits extremely hard having a low defense isn't gonna um be a good thing because even if you have high hp so you want to find a good balance where you're not getting hit so hard that most of your hp is getting chunked away but you still want to have high hp so make sure you're having that good balance speed and we need accuracy so if you're landing debuffs and you have a champion that can land the debuffs to be a solo champion you want to have accuracy and for the dragon i think uh, 400 accuracy is more than enough and he does go into the fight with an extra 50 points of accuracy he is fully booked here are the masteries we're taking the defense tree and we're taking resistance so that we can resist some of the poisons that are being placed on us from the hellraiser as well as some of the other debuffs going for counterattack whenever we can some damage mitigation coming from delay death and removal of debuff from resurgent we're taking heals whenever an enemy is uh, killed, so this helps out with waves. And we're taking increased heals and shield buffs whenever um, that does happen from this mastery. Now, when it comes to the discussion of improved parry versus blast proof, and Saf also mentioned this, you can take decreased damage received from AoE attacks by 5%, but in a lot of instances, crit rates are going to hit you because when you get crit hit the damage is multiplied and you're going to be banged out like you're just going to get banged and uh, nobody wants that so improved parry will actually decrease the damage by eight percent whenever you are hit with a crit hit so i prefer to take um, improved parry because it's eight percent over five percent yes all aoe attacks but in most instances you're already going to be hit crit uh, hit by crit so we take uh, the 8% 8, 8 damage mitigation and of course some extra resistance extra accuracy extra accuracy extra accuracy on this support tree we're taking cycle of magic to have a chance to have one of our skills put on our uh, reset our skills cool, cool down not put on cooldown but have it reset uh, cooldown skills uh, it's only a 5% chance but if it does proc it helps out quite a bit and then lord of steel for more base set bonuses Spirit Haste is important for your solo champions. You want to go into fights with dead allies or allies that are meant to die. So you get a 24 point boost to your speed. So at the end of the fight, when Theodore is going up against the Hellraiser or whichever um, dungeon I wanted to uh, solo, he is going to have an extra 24. So that's, that's well over 300 speed. 
And then we're going to have Master Hexer so that we have a chance to increase the duration of poisons and poison sensitivities that we have on him. Want to see a more in-depth guide on how I built Teodor? Check out this video. But if you don't have Teodor and you want to see Bad Alcazar instead, check out that video.